Oh, good day and welcome back. So we're still in chapter two in um, section six, and we're talking. About, we're going to be talking about pointers today. Now, if you never heard of a pointer, or never learned about them, and pointer just all concept of pointer is new to you, great. You have a blank state for us to work on. If, however, you come from a language like C, C++, and you've had to deal with pointers, and somehow somebody taught you or told you they were difficult, or your experience with them was negative, try and put that to the side, and let's look at them for the fresh eyes, okay? And so that's what we're going to be dealing with, and let's jump right in. Objective for this video, then, is to understand what a, point, a pointer is, and then, you know, start using them, uh, learn how to declare them, and then use them in our program. So that's basically it, just those two things. Review. So let's say we have a number, the number 1737. Now we don't just have that number in our heads only. In terms of a program, we're going to need to store that somewhere in memory. Now if we're going to store it in memory, well, it has to be that location in memory has an address associated with it so we can find it. And now that we have a memory location, we don't want to have to think about where it is. We just want to associate it with some variable. So we're going to use a variable, say like count, for example, that's going to be associated with that number um, and so in memory. Now, as we know, regardless of what your value is, regardless of it's a number or a string or whatever, it's going to eventually get represented as some combination of bits, right? And so basically numbers again. And the address is also a number. So wouldn't it be nice to be able to get the address that at that number where this um, your variable is and your value is in memory and also perhaps to be store that in yet another variable. Um, now you may be thinking, well, wait a second, why would I even want to know the address of my variable? The only the reason for me for using a variable in the first place is so I can refer to that value without having to think about where it is in, look, in memory. And that is true. Being able to get the address of where your variable is in memory um, allows you to have an indirection, right? You know, so you can refer to that value in memory indirectly using its address. And this opened up the window or the door really um, for you to be able to do a lot of really clever things and make your programs more efficient. Are we gonna get into those? So let's just try and examine what we've accomplished so far. So, so far what we've assumed is we have a variable count um, storing the value 1737 and this is located somewhere in memory at address 156. The other thing we have assumed is that we have created a second variable called pcount, and its value is the address of our count variable. So its value is 156, uh, which is the address of our count variable. And of course, pcount being a variable in its own right, it is also located somewhere in memory, and its address is 198. So we're assuming somehow that we're going to be able to get the address of these different things to know them. Now, assuming we're able to do what we just said, which is to be able to get the address of any variable, what we would have done is created a pointer. So a pointer is simply the address or um, memory location of a variable. It's simply a memory location. That's all a pointer is. And so now we're going to see how exactly you can use pointer. Now, before we see that, though, we need to talk about sort of the dual property of a pointer. And that is, if you have a pointer, which is in direction to uh, or a reference to something else, how do you use that reference and get back to the value? And so that is what we're going to talk about. And then we're going to see some code to illustrate this. So like I was saying, yeah, there are two parts to a pointer. There's the, I want to get a pointer. And how do I get it? Well, I need to say, I want to get the address of a variable, and for that, there's something called the address of operator, which is just uh, just like you have the plus operator and the negative operator, multiply operator, or subtract operator. Well, same thing. So this is a symbol that is used to say when you use in conjunction with a variable to say I want the address of this variable, which means I'm giving me the pointer to this for this variable. And so as an example, you can see that if we want the address of the count variable, we just put the ampersand in front of the count variable, and that means give me its address. And now that address, we can now store it in our variable count address. Um, now once we have a, the address in our variable, well, 
um, we might want to be able to use that variable to get back to the value that it's pointing to. In that case, we are use the dereference operator. And the dereference operator looks like just like the multiply operator. Instead of being in fix, you know, in between the two operands, it is actually post fix. So it comes in front of the variable. And so we just say star the variable, the pointer variable name, and now we'll be able to actually get back to the value. Now, this might seem a little bit hairy and up in the air, but let me show you some pictures to illustrate it. So here's our Kong variable again, and we're talking about the address of operator, the ampersand. And so think of the ampersand as this magical thing, transformation that you can do. You can give it an, a variable, and then it would spit out for you the address of that variable. It knows where to say, hey, this is located this memory location. So that's all the address of operator is. You put it in front of a variable, and magically, the result of when it's, that expression evalu is evaluated, is the address of where that variable is in memory. There's one other thing that's really cool about the address of operator. It can be used on any variable. Of course, you can't use it on a constant, but on any variable, which means that our pcong variable here, which contains the whose value is the address of our cong variable. Well, guess what? If you take this pcong variable and present it to the address of operator, or you say, give me the address of this pcong variable, it would also give you the address of that variable. And you can imagine if you store that value into another variable, you can keep going. So you could have any level of indirection you want. And all you have to do is remember that, oh, well, whatever you're pointing to is a pointer to a pointer to a pointer to a pointer to the value. But it's up to you how far you want to take this. And I think that part of it is what confuses people. These many levels of indirection that you could have. Not that you need to have them, but you could. It's possible. Being able to take the address of a variable is nice. You know, you know you have the address where that value is located in memory and you can pass that value around. But then the other person who gets it or when you're ready you now to say, well, okay, what is it that I'm actually pointing to? I want to get to the value. How do you do that? Well, there's an operator for that too. As you said, this is called a dereference operator. And it's just this asterisk or star, if you like. And so just using this asterisk with the variable it does the reverse and it says, oh, this is the memory location you're talking about. Let me give you what's being pointed to or the value that's at this memory location. And so if you use this on a pointer to a pointer, well, it's just going to give you the, um, the reference that can give you the, the address of the thing. And then if you dereference once again, then you get back to the actual value. So a little bit confusing there, but just remember that at each time you use the address of, operator to give you an address, you're going to use the dereference operator to get back to the thing. So if you use uh, address of two times, well, then you'll need to use dereference twice to get back to the value. And again, we'll, we'll see this in some code example later on. So declaring a pointer variable looks pretty much like declaring any other variable. You have a name and you have the type of the pointer. And then of course, a value is optional. Even the type is optional because it can be inferred. And sometimes, though, you want to be explicit. So, for example, if you look at and you skip down to where at the example, you see address of count is equal to just taking the address of count and storing it there. So, because count type is known, when we take the address of it, it's just going to be a point, pointer to that type. And so, address of count becomes a variable that is pointer to that type. Now, sometimes you might not have a variable value that you want to initialize a pointer with. So in this case, when I say buffer, is a variable and the type of it is pointer to byte. That is how I say that oh, this variable buffer actually points or contains the address or pointer to a um, byte value. And that's exactly what it means there. Notice the star. And that's where the number of um, indirection comes in because you could make two stars there. So I could say um, var buff is a pointer to a pointer to a byte. And I'll just put star star byte if it's that type of um, pointer that I do want to create as a one with a double reference, right? And at that point, since I didn't um, initialize it to anything, it's go lang by default, initialize the value to their zero value. And so in this case, it's nil. And what it means is that the pointer doesn't point to anything. Now, there's a little bit more to it than not pointing to anything because, I, like I said, it's a zero value. So you could think of the pointer has the address zero. And so if it has the address, memory address zero, why can't we dereference it? That is not allowed in pretty much any programming language. And um, the compiler and everything and the operating system make sure that oh, you can't dereference something at address zero. 
and if you try to, your program will crash. And so I've come into this line of code in the example you see later, and if you want to see your program crash, just uncomment it, compile it, and it will compile fine because it's a runtime problem, not a compile time problem. And when you run your program, you'll see that it will crash. Not a big deal, so it wouldn't hurt your computer or anything like that. So feel free to try that out. So text is all nice and good, but let's look at some code. So this is a simple example. So I have a function here, and you can find it in repository as usual. And what it does, um, application, sorry, not a function. And um, what it does is declare some variables and then some pointers also to some of those variables. And then it printed up, prints out the pointer and some of the values too. But it tries to show you that Golang as inferred in many of the cases, the type of the pointer. And you could see it there. If you look at the output, you can see buffer is a pointer to unsigned int 8, and the value of it is nil. Um, P buffer is a pointer to a pointer to unsigned int 8, and its value is the address of buffer. Um, so even though buffer itself contains a value that is nil or zero, well, it is somewhere in memory, and so that's the address of it. Uh, message, um, P message, this is the address of where the message is stored in memory. And so you can go through and you can see all of that, um, you know. And then the next one we're going to look at is um, dereference. And again, like I mentioned before, you cannot dereference nil. So if I try to dereference buffer, um, it would actually crash the program. And of course, I can't dereference count because count is not a pointer. And that one is a compile time error because Golang is going to check your code before you compile it. And so if you try to dereference count, it's going to say, oh, this is not a pointer. You know, it doesn't contain an address. Remember, dereference needs um, an address so it can go say, oh, what is the value stored at this address? Now, it doesn't matter if that's a pointer to a pointer to a pointer. At the end of the day, once it dereferenced one pointer, it's going to give you the value. And if that value happens to be an address, well, great. And then you just dereference again. You keep walking that chain until you get to the value. But once you get to the value, you cannot dereference the value. So we haven't covered everything you can possibly do with a pointer, but I think um, we've covered just a salient point about pointers here. And just in closing, I want to say that pointers are really cool. Like if you understand them, uh, you are well on your way to writing really effective programs in Go and system languages that do use pointers. Um, they're not as scary as you might think, uh, or if, you, if you've heard of them before, and I hope I present them in a way that they don't seem that scary. It's just a matter of, a pointer is just the address of something, some value. And um, even if it's the address of some other value, pointer, then so be it. But it's just the address of um, where to find some value in memory. And then it provides you the ability to write some really efficient program. And to be able to illustrate that to you, and this is just for illustration purposes, but even though it's for illustration, it's not far off the mark. The devil is in the detail, yes, but this still um, kind of conveyed the point. Now let's imagine that I had a really big string, um, you know, containing all the words in a book, a really, really big book. And what I want to do is to be able to have a function that count those words and print it and say, print out like, oh, there are 20,000 words in this string. Now there are two ways you can imagine this function being written. One is the function actually take text, um, string, sorry, as an uh, input parameter. Now if it did that, you might reasonably imagine that if I have a really, my string contain 20,000 bytes representing this book, and I need to pass it to the function, if I'm passing that string, then the program needs to make a copy of that string in order to pass it into the function, so that the function can have its own copy of the string that I want it to count. And so if I'm using 10 megabytes to represent uh, this long string, and then I have to pass it in a function, then I need another 10 megabytes in order to make a, not only I need to allocate 10 megabytes, but I need to copy the existing string to this other new location and then say, oh, you, function, you get to use this. Now, um, that's going to be slow if I have to do that. Not to mention my program, if I call something and pass along this string, it has to make a copy of it. It's not only using up a lot of memory, but it's taking time copying it. But if I could pass a pointer, then I can just say, oh, this really big string is located in memory location 10,000. And you can go over there and um, just, you know, comb the words in it and print it out. And so you can see that not only 
is my program going to be faster because I don't have to spend time copying this 10 megabytes to somewhere else in R for this uh, function, the conk function to work on it. But because, um, and it'd be better for my program too because I don't have to allocate 10 megs, an additional 10 megs, um, each time I want to operate or pass this string to other functions. So that's one example in where being able to have the address of something in memory allows you to be your program to be more efficient. Now there are a number of other use cases and we're gonna see them eventually, but I think that's one example should hopefully convince you that being it, having pointers and using them and knowing how to use them and having them in a programming language actually helps you write in faster programs. That's why languages like Go, C, and C++ tend to be faster than other languages that do not have pointers. Even though those languages try to hide pointer behind the scene, but there's still certain things. Um, being able to manipulate pointers explicitly um, makes it more efficient also. All right, so that's it. Uh, again, I hope I've been able to teach you something. Um, hope you like the direction again and subscribe. If you haven't already, invite others to subscribe and see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.